Hello folks and welcome to my top tips on how to prevent save game corruption in Football Manager 2016. Now this is the worst thing that can happen to a virtual football manager other than getting sacked. Now these tips will not help you avoid the save game corruption, cannot guarantee that at all. There are multiple things that cause that to happen and that risk increases the longer and longer your save goes. What I suggest here may be overkill for some people, but I was burnt on Football Manager 2009 where I lost four seasons worth of progress with Exeter and I was in the Champions League and Alvaro Negredo was banging them in for me and he was scoring as well. Whee! Bad joke. But I'll start with tip number one and it's really simple. It's enable the autosave, strangely enough, which you can do by just ticking that little box there. I set mine to every week, now that's in-game week, and I use the five file rolling autosave, try saying that quickly, which means every time I save it, a new save is created up until a fifth save. By doing this, you get the safety of not having a single save, but you also don't end up getting like millions and millions of files. I also use this tick box here, which also means that when I click the save button manually, that's this save button here, rocket science, it will use those five saves. Tip number two, Again, a really, really simple one, but it's just create a new save each each time you finish a season. So if anything does go wrong, at least you've only lost one season's worth of data. And then when you create a new save, the five file rolling save will happen again, so you will have up to five saves to go back to per season. Yes, it's going to potentially take up more hard drive space, but the amount of data you potentially lose is a lot less and you can archive those off into another drive. Which leads me on to tip number three, which is saving your files in multiple locations. Doesn't matter whether it's a pen drive, a external hard drive, another hard drive that's inside your computer but a separate drive, or on a network drive that you've got. Which also brings me on to a bit of a bugbear. You can't actually assign where you want to put your save games within the game itself anymore. You used to be able to do it and used to be able to so, so all of your graphics packs and everything like that, they all have to go onto your, your C drive and if you've got an SSD which generally has smaller storage space, it means you've got taking up 10 gig of a, an SSD which can be re it's an absolute pain in the ass. and I don't know why they've taken it out but they have. Now you can do it manually by way of just dragging and dropping but what you can do is have a bat file that will do that for you and you can set that up on a schedule so at the end of every day that schedule runs and copies your saves to a different drive so you don't, you can just completely forget about it and so if and when the problem does happen you can come back to it you can go back to go back to that file and you, you can have your eureka moment think ah yes I've got those backups there on this drive go to the drive ah miraculously they're there excellent You can drag and drop them manually, but what I prefer to do is I use a batch file script that will copy them from the game folder. That will copy them from the folder where the game saves the files by default, and uh, then have them copy them to my uh, another drive. So that's these two file uh, folders I've got up at the top here. Now the script is down here. Uh, in opening Notepad++, you don't have to use Notepad++, you can use anything at all. You can even just use Notepad. Um, I'm just going to take that second line out. All you would need to do is replace the paths that I'm using and replace them with the paths that you want to use. So this first one you would change it to be wherever your original save games are stored. And then you'd change the second one, which is here, to where you want the games to be copied to which is here and you've got this little bit here that that basically tells the script to only take the save files don't worry about the config file or anything else that's going to be in that folder and also we've got this slash y which will override confirm any overrides for you so you don't have to in interject the program from running and then the slash d which will only copy 
the files that are newer than the files that already exist within the folder you're copying them to. Basically, copy that exactly as it is. I will put the script in the description if you're willing to trust someone on the internet who you've never met and don't know. <laughs> but hey, pinch of salt. It's no worse than Googling it. So you need to save this as a back file. So file save as. You'll need to click, for the first time, you'll need to click all types and then and then just type the extension yourself. It'll ask me to override this, but see. So if I click this, it should just flash up and then we should what we should see is files appear in this folder here. Magic. There we go. So that, all that's done is literally copied it from one to the other. The next level from the bat file, copying things would be to setting the bat file to run off a schedule so it does it automatically. If anyone is interested, then let me know in the comments below. Tip four is using file history or time machine if you're using a Mac to restore your backups. Now, this is hidden away in control panel. It'll look something like this. Now I've got mine turned off, but it's, it's dead easy to set up. But what it allows you to do is restore back previous saves. So if you save and it corrupts, you can then go back to the previous version before you saved it. So you, if you had this turned on, if, you, if we go back to the folders, if I right click on this and go to properties. Now in the Mac, in Mac, it's a lot easier to do to restore things from Time Machine if you need assistance doing that then again let me know in the comments moving back to the Windows side of things if you would if I was to have file history on and I've saved this save multiple times all of the previous versions will be available here so it's just a case of selecting the one you want clicking restore or open and then it would restore the file you chose so my fifth and final tip is to use a cloud-based service to store your saves now I know there is Steam Cloud but I've had plenty of issues with Steam Cloud not uploading saves when it should have and not realizing until I've gone to play the save on another machine and it's not been there. I use OneDrive myself. There are plenty of others like Google Drive or Dropbox. They all do a similar sort of thing and they all allow you to sync specific folders and all that sort of stuff. Despite the game not allowing you to choose where you want to have your main folder, you can load a game from anywhere. So if I was to click the drop down arrow, I'm just gonna, I've got my drop, Dropbox, OneDrive folder here on this drive, that's where I've so the folder I'm navigating to is the folder you're seeing here. So that's my most recent save. I've now loaded that save up, which is this save here. If I then go and resave it, it will save it to the location I've loaded it from rather than loading it into the default location set within the game. You don't have to go through and drag and drop or set up any scripts to save them back to where you've set. You can just constantly load them from this folder, which is great because it means that you can load it when you're on multiple devices. Each time you save, the original save is renamed to version 2 or 3 or whatever and the latest version is always the original save name. Now, none of, none of those will have uploaded to the cloud yet, as my internet is not quick enough. They're 60 meg files, so this is the downside of using a cloud-based service. It can take a bit of time to upload them. With the files being uploaded into the cloud, they have a high availability, so if your hard drive does die, you can access them from anywhere and from most devices now as well. I tend to use a combination of saving and loading to a cloud-based service, and then I have a separate script that will then copy the files that I've got stored locally to an external device. This way I have a copy of the save on my MacBook Pro ready to go, I have a copy on my PC ready to go, I've got one in the cloud should I ever need it, and I've also got it on the external device should any of those fail or if I don't have internet access. If you found this video useful then tickle that like button for me, and if you have any other questions then put them in the comment section below. Once again, I've been Matt, you've been great, thanks for watching.